Hey guys, I'm going to be teaching you how to create your very own main menu in Godot. This tutorial is part of a series where I show you the basics of making a game. We've done things from creating pause menus to creating a player to creating procedurally generating terrain and all that cool stuff. Uh, this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on the main menu though. So we're going to assume that you guys already have a main play scene. When we think of a main menu, we got to think of a few things first. So we think of what buttons we want. So we want play, we want quit, stuff like that. Uh, do we want like an options menu or something? So we can create a button that goes to our options menu and stuff like that. So for now, we have an options menu, so we can create those buttons. To start off making our main menu though, we're going to add a node and we'll create a canvas layer. And this is just going to represent what the screen is looking at. And it's kind of just plopped on top of the screen. Whatever's underneath the canvas layer is just going to be overlaid over the screen. Usually it's used for GUI, but in this case, it also can be used for a main menu. That way, when we resize the screen, nothing's going to break. And then we're going to add just a base control uh, underneath the canvas layer, and we can just set the size of the control to a full rectangle. That way, when we do resize the screen, everything is going to move in aspect to whatever our screen size is because it is a full rectangle. Oh, and I want to separate our buttons vertically so we can add a VBox container. Um, and let's just set it to the left side of the screen. Uh, you can set it to right, you can set it to the bottom, wherever you want. It. But for now, I'm going to set it to the left side of the screen. Right now, I'll set it to left fill. So whenever we resize our screen, it's going to make sure it's filling that whole area. We can then increase the size making sure our buttons aren't too thin and add a little bit of padding from the left wall and also a little bit of padding from the top and bottom walls. So that's our container for our buttons. We might as well just add the buttons while we're at it. So button and I'm just going to, I'm just going to put some text here just for now. We'll add play and I'll name it play. We'll duplicate it two more times. Cool, so now we have our three main buttons. We can change the way it's going to be aligned inside of the B box, and we can set that to either, I like fill, but also center works as well if you don't want the buttons to be too big. And if you want like a custom background as well, uh, under this control, you can add your own texture rep, and then wherever it says texture, first of all, you would set it to the max, and then wherever it says texture, you drop in your background texture. I don't have one at the moment, so I'm going to instead just have a color rectangle. So color rect, and we can set this to maybe like a dark gray or something, I'm not sure. And we'll set that to the full screen and it's drawing over our buttons. So we need to drag that to the top there. So it's you know, nice in the hierarchy. And then now we need a title for our game. So we're gonna use a label node for that one. And we're gonna say game title here. I don't know what your game's name is, so I'm just gonna do that and we can set it to the top middle uh, again this is very up to you uh you don't have to set it to top middle but i do think this is fairly standard for a lot of games and you can set your alignment to be center for both if you want it to be in the center of your box again up to you um you'll notice everything's looking pretty small uh we can fix that by using themes in Godot. so i'm going to walk you guys through how to install your own themes or make your own themes. So under this drop down here, you'll see a new theme. I'm gonna click on that and then click on the box. I'm just gonna open up this theme panel and uh, you'll see type none. So we need to create a type. First of all, we'll do our label. So we're gonna be working on our title. And one thing that I think will be useful is uh, type variations. So if you're gonna set up your label and you want your title to be different from a different type of text that you're using, like, I don't know, if you've got a dialogue system. But obviously, you don't want your dialogue system to be the same font size as your title. So I would think it's safe to assume that our title is going to be header large. So we can set the type variation to header large. And actually, instead of selecting label here, we can type in header large and then uh, edit the header large individually. So we can set up a custom font size. 28 is a bit small um, for a title. So let's just change it to 90, something like that. That's a lot nicer. And that's pretty much all you can do in the header large. If you do want to override whatever your label, like font color is, you can do that in the header large, but you do have to type out like font color and then you add it and you'll see it's there. So now you can override whatever your base label is. But if you think you're 
font color is going to stay the same for your headers and your main text. Then you don't have to worry about doing that. So we can delete that. And then say go back to label and change whatever our font color is. You can see the header large also changes. We're just going to keep that on white because it does contrast well with the darker background. So we're going to do the same thing for our buttons as well. Um, first of all, we should save. We should save whatever the theme is. Um, you would put this in the appropriate file directory. Mine is very messy right now. I do not recommend doing that. And over here in theme, we've got all three of our buttons selected. We can quick load and we can load our theme. So nothing's changed. Uh, that's because we haven't set up our buttons yet. So we're gonna type in button. And the main place where you will change what the button looks like is gonna be the rainbow box. So you'll see hover normal, pressed, focus, disabled. But for now, I'll just show you guys how to create your own button. And I won't do all of them. You go to the drop down, you click style. You can choose any of the style boxes. If you have your own texture, you can use that and whatnot. But uh, Starbox Flat is going to be easiest to demonstrate how to change it. And that's what I use for a lot of things. So we can change the background color and stuff like that. So if we want a lighter one and change the width of the border here, and you can change, uh, you can see that it's, uh, it's being changed in the display. You can also change the corner width, make it slightly rounded, stuff like that. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, this is up to you. You can go through this yourself as well. And if you want to change the font color of the buttons as well, you've got all your other colors here as well. You can go through this as well. There's so many options like shadows and stuff like that. So I would recommend having a look through this if you want something else. And that's going to be it for the look of the main menu. Now we can move on to connecting the signals from buttons. This is going to be relatively simple. We just need a script on the canvas layer can just call it a uh, main menu, something like that. Create a script and then on play, we're going to connect that. We're going to connect the options uh, pressed. We're going to create, we're going to connect the quit pressed as well. And the quit press I'll do straight away because it's probably the easiest. It's just going to be get tree dot quit. This just closes the window of Godot. Uh, this won't really work for web games, I should say. Uh, but it is going to work if it's an exe so for web games you don't really need to quit and for options and play there's a few different ways you can change your scene actually so the way i've done it in the previous tutorials is have your variable up here equals preload whatever and then your file name here another way you can do it is actually in the function you don't need to declare an on ready variable that's at the top, you just need your file name. So you can go get tree dot change scene to file. And then on play, we're going to change it to our main scene. So just press tab there. We're going to do the same thing for the options pressed. So now we can go ahead and test our project. Look at that. Oh, what's happened? Our main scene is not here. Okay. The reason why that's happened is because uh, there's a setting in project settings that when you first start off your project, it's going to, and you first click play, it's going to ask, oh, main scene has not been defined. Set this, the main scene. And if you haven't worked with main menus before, and this is your first time doing it, then uh, you'll be like, oh, what's happening? Uh, so basically you just go to project settings under application and run. You're going to change what your main scene is. And the main scene is basically what scene first runs when you click play. The default scene basically and obviously in our case is going to be the main menu and a lot of other games cases as well you want the main menu to be the first scene that comes up so now when we run the project our main menu pops up we can click, click play options or quit and then when we click play we can now play our game as well so everything works perfect uh then if you have like a pause menu or something, I'll probably add another button that goes back to your main menu. And that is all on how to create your own main menu in Godot. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If you want to see other tutorials I've made, the playlist will be in the description as well as the code. So this project files will be on my GitHub, which the link you can check in the description as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.